Good morning, members and friends of both St. Paul Lutheran Church and Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Uh, Sarah and I want to welcome you from wherever you are worshiping with us this morning, be it your living room or your kitchen table or, or on the road, uh, on your phone, wherever it may be, welcome. Uh, and this is our third Sunday of Advent, which is kind of hard to believe that this morning we are lighting our candle of joy, which is something that we are desperately needing in our world today as we wrap up such a tumultuous year uh, in the history of humanity. Uh, we need this joy that Christ himself would bring. And Pastor Sarah and I are so full of joy over our partnership in the gospel that St. Paul Lutheran and Emmanuel Lutheran can share during these difficult times uh, while we are worshiping virtually. We are thankful for our musicians and our readers and our soundboard operators and all of those who come in uh, to help us record to ensure that we can still be the church gathered around God's word, even remotely from wherever we are. So to these people, we say thank you so very much. I'll invite you to pay attention to emails or phone tree messages or social media posts from both Pastor Sarah and I concerning the path moving forward in, in both of our congregations, uh, we will be making those plans available uh, as they become available to us as we consult with our councils and the governor's recommendations moving forward. But for today and for now, we begin our time of worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Called and gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us come humbly before God, confessing our sins known and unknown, trusting in God's gracious word of forgiveness. Our holy and merciful Father, who brings life out of death and transforms us into new creatures through his redeeming word, he knows the depths of our hearts completely. So let us therefore make a confession of our sin, but let us pause silently to reflect internally as we bring these sins before God, those sins that have sought to separate us from him this past week. Lord Jesus, risen Savior, we come to you in sorrow for our faults and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Although in Christ our light has come, we too often prefer the darkness of sin. Forgive us, fill us with your Spirit, and free us from the shackles of our failings. Give us once again the joy of your salvation and make us instruments of peace and love in the world. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and a glorious mercy of the Lord shines around you. In the name and by the authority of your Savior, Jesus Christ, I announce the forgiveness of all your sins. May the Holy Spirit strengthen your faith, heal your troubled spirit, and equip you to proclaim the greatness of the Lord until the day he comes again. Amen. Thanks be to God. We join in singing together our opening hymn, Hark the Glad Sound.
ancient world, various peoples lit fires to mark the coming of the winter's dark season and pray for the return of light. To, to us, us, these candles are signs of the Christ's light, who will come again in his fullness to this dark world. Until the dawning of that great day, we watch and wait, remembering the promises of God. Today we turn our eyes to the candle of joy and hear from Isaiah 35. The wilderness shall be glad, the desert, desert shall rejoice and blossom, like the crocus in, shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. They shall see the glory of the Lord, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. The lame shall leap like a deer and the mute sing for joy. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let us pray. God of joy, your son is our one true king, and we await his return. Renew us in joy, that we may work toward your advent of peace among all nations. God of the promise, come into our darkness. Amen. As I light the candles of hope, peace, and joy on our wreath, please join in singing our Advent hymn. children of God, especially the youngest among us. Today we're going to hear some stories about witnesses. Um, and that can be kind of a confusing thing because sometimes we're told, well, don't tattle on others or don't tell other people what you've seen or keep a secret. And so I was playing with our son Jonah the other day and I, he has these cards with different pictures on them. And this one, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a picture of the moon. And I got to thinking about the moon, because I don't know if you knew this or not, but the moon does not make its own light. The sun makes its own light. Light comes out of the sun. When you turn on a light bulb that works, light comes out of the light bulb. If you light a candle, light comes out of it. But the moon doesn't have any light coming out of it on its own. The only way the moon lights up at night is because of the sun. The sun is making light, even though we can't see the sun, and it hits the moon, and then it bounces off the moon and comes so that we can see it. The moon doesn't make its own light. It simply is a reflection of the light of the sun. And when we're being told to witness to Jesus, when people say things like, be a mirror of Jesus Christ, this is kind of what they're talking about, being like the moon. Jesus is the light of the world, and when he shines so brightly, because we are his people, when Jesus' light shines on us, it reflects off so other people can see it. When you were baptized, the candle was lit, and they, people said something like, let your light so shine before others that they may know the goodness of God. This is what we are called to do as Christians. To be like the moon, reflecting the light of the Son of God, so that the whole world can know how good Jesus is. 
Would you please pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being a bright light in a dark and scary world. Help us to remember to be like the moon, reflecting the light of the Son of God. Be with us as we prepare for Christmas and help us to remember that this season is all about you. In your name we pray. Amen. And at this time, Dave will turn our hearts and minds to the Holy Scriptures. Good morning. Uh, this morning's first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console all those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild their old ruins, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. Now going to verse 8. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. I will direct their work in truth. I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and the bride adorns herself with jewels. <clears throat> for as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to bring, bring forth, so God, the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. The responsive reading today is Psalm 126. I will read the odd and you can respond with the even. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dream. Our, Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. The second reading this morning comes from the book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in every give everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things, hold fast what is good. Abstain from everything of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole heart, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful who also will do it. Here ends the reading. Our Holy Gospel this day comes from St. John, the first chapter. 
Glory Glory to you, Christ, Christ, our our Lord Lord and God. God. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied to the words of I- with the words of Isaiah the prophet. I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water. John replied, but among you stands one who you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We We praise praise you, Christ, Christ, our our Lord Lord and God. God. I, Sarah Don Deutsch, swear that the evidence I give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. When a witness is being sworn in in court, whether they use the word swear or affirm, and whether they say, so help me God, or under pains and penalties of perjury, the witness is making a promise that the words coming out of their mouth are true. If it is found that that witness is intentionally lying, if they commit perjury, there will be fines and jail time. Telling the truth, especially when in court, is extremely important. It's so vital that you could go to jail if you lie to a judge or a jury. Because without reliable witnesses, how would we know what happened? Without reliable witnesses, how would there be any justice? Without a reliable witness, we are caught in the dark. We're caught in fear. We have no assurance of what is to come. We need people to tell the truth, especially when something tragic and terrible has happened. John the Baptist was a reliable witness. A relative of Jesus and nearly the same age, he was sent from God. Verse 6 in the first chapter of the Gospel of John is one of those passages where I wish I was a little bit better at Greek because it leads us to better understand that John was more than just someone randomly chosen. He was specifically called by God. He was created for this purpose. He had a relationship. He was sent to tell of the one coming who would save us all. These words that we hear from the book of John are found in the midst of the beautiful poem that we'll hear closer to Christmas time about Jesus Christ being the light of the world. John the Baptist swears to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and he has been prepared by God to do just that. And so when John is questioned by the religious leaders, he doesn't come up with his own thoughts or ideas. He doesn't embellish on the story. He doesn't try to make himself look better. He quotes from the scriptures. And he tells them that he has been called by God and that God is making a way for Jesus Christ to come into the world. That the one who had been born in a manger was now preparing to do his ministry. But sometimes, especially in this Advent season, 
we begin to think that instead of being a witness to the work that God is doing, we think that we have to do God's work for him. We begin to think that we have to be the ones to make the path straight, that we have to determine when and where Christ is coming, that if we don't get it right, God can't do his work. Instead of witnessing to Christ's light, we throw a fit when someone says happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. Instead of giving freely to show others God's love and compassion, we calculate if this donation will help us out on our taxes. Instead of rejoicing that people are returning to hear God's word, we look down our noses at those we haven't seen in church since last Christmas. Instead of doing what is best for the sake of our neighbor, we worry only about ourselves and doing what makes us feel and look good. And too often, fellow Christians, we do these things in the name of Jesus, claiming our Christianity as the justification for casting out others. We provide false witness, claiming that Jesus would think the way that we do, naming ourselves as judge, jury, and executioner when, in fact, we are called to stand on the witness stand, telling of what we have seen Christ do. You are called to be a witness, not to be God. You are called to witness to the one who clears a path, to speak about a God who disperses the darkness of night and creates everlasting life for you. You are called to tell of a God who has taken the future into his own hands. A custom in the Lutheran church, as I mentioned in the children's sermon, is for a candle to be lit when a person is baptized. And when that candle is lit, one of two things is said. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Or, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. That day, when you were grafted into God's family through the waters of baptism, you were called to witness to the light, to tell others about Jesus Christ and what he has done. Because Jesus did not come into the world to chastise people or to spread false information. Jesus didn't come into this world to scare others into following him or to start a new religion with better rules than the other ones. Jesus came into this world to save you from your sin, to bring light into darkness. And whatever is darkening your world right now, a diagnosis, a time in quarantine, a failing grade, a broken relationship, mounting debt, mental health, doubt, death itself. Jesus Christ came to bring light in the midst of that. Because we are all guilty of not being very good witnesses. So he continues to send others to us, the ones who are supposed to be witnessing ourselves, to tell us again, Jesus loves you. This darkness is not what defines you. The light of the world does. But the other thing is that when you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, you are not allowed to withhold information either. Not telling what has happened makes you just as guilty as spinning a false tale. And we have all gotten so caught up in trying to feel our way through the dark world that when we are called to witness, to reflect the light of Jesus too often, we make an excuse. Well, I don't have the right words. I don't want them to think that I'm just a Bible thumper. I don't want to offend anyone. And so we don't witness. We remain silent. And when a witness is found guilty of untruthfulness, the hammer comes down. Whether it's because they spun a false tale or because they withheld information. Usually. But you have a very unusual judge and a very good 
representative. Because with God as your judge and Jesus Christ as your representative, when we stand before the throne of God, he will look at you and say, guilty. And then he looks to his representative, your representative, Jesus Christ, and pardons you. You are guilty. You are worthy, not just of the five years in jail that can come with perjury in court, but of death. You are guilty, but you are pardoned. Your record of being a terrible witness has been expunged. God sees you as guilty, but also sees the one who died for you. God knows that you haven't lived up to your potential. He knows his son whose hands were pierced for you, too. John the Baptist was a pretty good witness. And yet he was an imperfect sinner in need of a savior as well. He knew that he was not the Messiah. He knew that he was not worthy to untie the manure-crusted sandals of Jesus. But all he could do was stand in that river and proclaim that Jesus is coming for you and for me. That was the task that God had given him. And so he witnessed. He testified to the truth. We are fortunate that we live in the days after John the Baptist. Because our witness is not that Jesus, just that Jesus is coming, but that he is here now. He was born in a stable for you. He died on a cross for you. He has risen again for you. And we know this with certainty. This is what we get to witness to. Jesus is here and he is here to pardon you from your sin. He is here to release you from your guilty conscience, from the things that are weighing you down as we approach the Christmas season. He is here to bring you hope, peace, love, and joy. So let us go and tell the world. Let us witness to what God has done for us and remind people that in the midst of this darkness, Christ has promised to return, to bring light into the darkness. Amen. I invite you to sing with us our hymn of the day, Savior of the Nations, come. At this time, I'll ask you to join me in making a confession of our Christian faith, our confession in God, our Father and unusual judge, in Jesus Christ, our representative, 
and in the Holy Spirit who brings us comfort and gives us the words to witness with. So together we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we offer our prayers for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all, whatever their need may be. Good and gracious Father, you have called us to witness concerning Christ as John did in the wilderness, preparing the way for our Messiah. Despite our unworthiness, you sent your only begotten Son to pardon us of our iniquity and remember our sin no more. Make us bold heralds of the coming Savior of man, that the light of Christ may shine in our lives so others may know your great love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the nations, Isaiah wrote of your love for justice and your hatred of evil. As you robed the prophet with garments of salvation and righteousness, so too robed the leaders of this world with your spirit that they might lead humanity in the ways of justice and unity. Be with our governing authorities from Washington, D.C. to here at home. Hear our prayers for President Trump, Vice President Pence, President-elect Biden, Governor Reynolds. Use them as your instruments and preserve our land and citizens in harmony always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, as we prepare for the season of joy, peace, and goodwill, we are mindful of those families who will sit down to holiday tables with an empty chair, those who are missing the brave men and women who make our celebrations possible. Give courage, honor, and strength to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces. Give healing to those who have been wounded mentally and emotionally. Uplift them in their difficult tasks and impart patience on their families awaiting their return home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all mercy and consolation, the Apostle Paul reminded us this morning to rejoice always and give thanks in every circumstance. Pour out a full measure of your presence and healing touch on all those who are finding it hard to rejoice and difficult to give thanks those who pray for your movement in their midst as they battle illnesses of mind, body, or spirit. We pray especially this morning for Royce Jasper and Bellamy Egdorf, both of whom are now at home with their parents after extended hospital stays. We pray also for Kendra and Larry, for Bev and Clay, for Isaiah and Bertha, and for the family of Irma Fick, who commended their mother and grandmother to your eternal care and keeping this past week. And with these brothers and sisters in the faith, those whom we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as you go into the world to witness to the one who has pardoned you from all your sin, do so with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in singing our sending hymn, Lo, How a Rose is Growing. in peace. You have been pardoned and set free. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God.